Zoom is a fantastic tool that allows us to come together virtually in web conferencing settings. We can see each other's faces, we can hear each other's voices, we can share our screens. But occasionally people attend Zoom meetings where they don't really belong there. Known as Zoom bombers, they sometimes have malicious intent and seek to disrupt the cadence and efficiency of your meetings. In this video, I'm going to discuss a few things that you can do before you start your meeting in order to prevent Zoom bombing, as well as measures you can take during your meeting in order to prevent or resolve situations that might arise. So I've logged on to my account at zoom.us and I have a meeting that I have created. I wanna ensure that I take some measures in order to prevent Zoom bombers. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to edit my meeting. The first thing I can do is make sure that I have a unique meeting ID for that meeting. And with that, I can assign a passcode. The passcode can be alphanumeric, but it's a good practice to use numbers. Sometimes people are calling into your meeting and they don't have access to a full keyboard. For example, if they're logging in on their phone. You can also require passcodes specifically participants who are joining you on the phone. I'm gonna switch over to my settings tab and in the security section, I have an option to toggle on require passcode for participants joining by phone. If you enable this feature in the settings, then it actually enables it for every meeting that you create. Another thing I can do is to make the registration required. What that does is it requires participants to provide their name and their email address. And then when they log into your meeting, then they can't log in unless they provide the name and email address that matches with the registration. Another security option I have is to enable a waiting room. When the waiting room is enabled, then the host of the event will have to invite people from the waiting room in order to participate into the main meeting. If you want to always enable a waiting room, then you can do that at your global settings and you just toggle it on. You also have the option during the meeting with the waiting room enabled to push participants from the main meeting to the waiting room. If I scroll down, a few other options that you have is that you can turn participant video off and you can also mute participants upon entry. If I want to always have my participants muted on entry, then I can enable that in my global settings. If you click enable join before host, then that means the meeting will start as soon as the first participants join, even if it's not the host. So an added security measure would be to disable that option. And that way the host has control over who enters from the waiting room. You can select the option only authenticated users can join by signing into Zoom. And that way they can only attend your meeting if they have institutional credentials. A feature that might be useful to you in the basic settings would be to disable file transfer, and that way participants cannot send files to each other. File transfer can be a useful thing depending on your meeting, so just be mindful that that option exists. Another option that you can consider is allow removed participants to rejoin. You may want to enable that if you accidentally remove somebody from your meeting that they can have the option to come back. But if you're worried about Zoom bombers, then you might want to disable that function so that you don't have to worry about them returning. We've discussed many measures that you can take before you've started a meeting in order to prevent disruption and Zoom bombers. But even when you have your meeting running, there are several options that you can take. So we'll walk through a few of those. One thing you can do is to designate a co-host. If I go to my participants and hover over a participant name, I can click the more option and I can designate that person as a co-host. That can be useful in order for you to help moderate the meeting. You can divide your responsibilities so you can better manage your participants. One thing you can do if you don't want people sharing their screens is to click on the advanced sharing options on the screen share button and ensure that only the host can share their screens and not all participants. Additionally, you can also restrict the chat if you click on the chat button and click the more option, then you can limit people to chatting only with the host, publicly, publicly and privately, or you can disable chat for everybody. If you want to stop a participant from speaking, then you can mute or ask to unmute a participant. Now, if you mute participants, then they might have the option to unmute themselves. Also in the participant options, if you click more, and if somebody is sharing their screen and you don't want them to share their screen anymore, then you can click to stop video. Now you can't remove a host or a co-host from a meeting, but if the person is not a co-host, then you have the option to put them in a waiting room or you can remove them from the meeting. In my participants tab, if I click on the lower right hand corner, 
Then I can enable or disable a waiting room, and I can also lock the meeting, preventing additional people from joining. Some of these options are also available if you click on the security button at the bottom of the menu. Here I can lock a meeting, I can enable a waiting room, I can remove participants, I can also prevent them from unmuting themselves, sharing the screen, chatting, or renaming themselves. Finally, you have an option to report unruly participants. Zoom is a fantastic platform that allows us to truly collaborate in a virtual setting. By taking the measures that we've discussed, you can ensure that your meeting will go off without disruptions, and you can conduct your meetings with a peace of mind.